I truly believe that a lot of the things that go on in the third world that American companies do or the American government does would not happen if the American people were properly informed by the media of the overall consequences of these policies. The media is the link that allows people to be informed, to make intelligent decisions about how to live their lives. And when you lack that information, it's very hard to take action. TV has gone from being TV to crack TV, or to free-based TV, you know, it's, it's so much more intense with news going, whoosh, 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 you know, and the things along the bottom, you know, and all, it's like just, you know, it's, like, it's super intense right now. They were on a voyage. Family safety and security. The blockbuster legal chart. And can your cat do this? Back in the 80s, it was required that if you were going to use the public airwaves, you had to perform public service. And one of the ways that television networks and television stations satisfied this public service requirement in order to keep their licenses was by producing television news. Now TV news is another profit center just like TV entertainment and TV sitcoms and everything else. And so we no longer have news on TV in the United States. We have infotainment. More on the McDonald's makeover is Ronald McDonald himself. Hey, how you doing? Hello, Amy. This new approach to better help, what do you make of all that? Well, I, I think the clothes are terrific. you got to see them. i got a great new Go Active warm-up suit. What about your buddies, Grimace and the Hamburglar? Are they getting into shape too? Grimace looks like he could lose a few pounds. Well, you know what? Actually, for a Grimace, he's in really good shape. And it's not about what's really happening in the world or what's really important in the world or even what's really going to affect you and me ultimately in the world. It's about what's going to get the most ratings. So we're treated to Runaway Brides and Michael Jackson and O.J. Simpson and all these things that have no impact whatsoever on our lives. I think most important, we need a media that tells the truth. We need a media that is not in bed with corporations, that gets out there and sheds a spotlight where it matters. Because there is no glare of a media spotlight, the corporations get away with what they can. And that's very frightening because the people of these communities pay a very high price. Sometimes they pay with their lives. It's all related to fossil fuel consumption, there's no question. And so you, when you asked me about, was it population and consumption that's driving a lot of environmental change and degradation, the consumption of fossil fuels is by far the largest driver of all environmental degradation that we see. Climate change is caused primarily by the carbon dioxide uh, that's building up as a result of fossil fuel combustion. The evidence of it from shrinking ice caps uh, to the fact that a whole variety of ecosystems are, are now changing in response to uh, dramatically higher temperatures. Heat is a form of energy, and as the heat in the atmosphere increases, the energy in the atmosphere increases. That increased energy in the atmosphere causes more severe storms, more violent hurricanes, more violent tornadoes, bigger hailstorms, bigger thunderstorms. Almost certainly there's going to be severe 
damage to human societies, sea level rise, increased frequency of droughts, probably more severe weather conditions, probably spread of a number of diseases into areas where they weren't prevalent before. Our carbon dioxide levels are spiking again, and this represents a significant threat to the human race in that it will produce changes in climate that will upset the equilibrium. Uh, for example, you have the North Atlantic Ocean Current, the Great Conveyor Belt. This giant river of water is flowing from the Pacific. It's a hundred times larger than all the rivers on Earth. And it's flowing from the Pacific with warm water at the surface of the sea. It's flowing around the southern tip of Africa, up along the coast of South America, around the southern tip of the United States, we call it the Gulf Stream, and up to Greenland. And then, because it's lost so much of its fresh water by evaporation, and it's lost so much of its temperature, it becomes colder, it settles to the bottom of the ocean. and then travels south back the same route all the way around Africa and a thousand years later appears out in the Pacific where it comes back up and, and the cycle repeats itself. That of course is what allows Europe to be temperate even though Europe is at the same latitude as Siberia or Alaska. The temperature of the ocean just goes up a few degrees. Isn't that a great thing? No. No, it's not a great thing because what it can do is it can shut down the Great Conveyor Belt and plunge the Northern Hemisphere into an ice age. That would mean unimaginable destruction of human life and, and human society and human culture. There's one scenario which the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has talked about, which they brought up about 12 years ago, I think, in deliberations. At the time, everyone thought it was so dramatic that it was nonsense. And that was the ability of global warming to actually shut down the ocean conveyor belt. It was thought to be so dramatic as to be impossible. But actually, what we're seeing now in the last few years is evidence that it's already happening. The discovery and the use of fossil fuel is really the single most important technological advance in the entire history of humankind in terms of allowing us to dominate the planet and literally to displace other species from their sources of energy to take over ecosystems and to continue to divert the flows of natural energy into our own purposes and to aggrandize the human species. We're extinguishing other life forms somewhere between 100 and 10,000 times more rapidly than species were going extinct prior to, particularly prior to the Industrial Revolution. Now, some scientists have equated the current human impact on non-human life to other great extinctions historically that have occurred because of asteroid impacts or other cataclysmic events. Some say then we're in the sixth great extinction, and this is a human-induced extinction. It's the first time in the history of the planet where one species of organism has become the equivalent of major geological events in determining the evolution of the rest of the life forms on Earth.